I thank the Lord for uh, a full year now here in Costa Rica. It's been um, on the 2nd of September was when I had the my kidney removed uh, because of cancer. And I am almost at the very end of the year's treatment of immunotherapy. So uh, by, by November, I will officially be finished with the, with the um, immunotherapy. But then the doctor has asked for another three months that I, that I stay here another three months while he regulates uh, medication and looking at post, uh, post care and so forth. So as to let me return to Mexico. So I'm looking at returning to Mexico possibly in February next year. And uh, treatment has gone in, in, in the middle of everything extremely well. Um, I haven't had a lot of secondary effects, just very tired a lot of the time. But um, I just recently, and I'm, I'm very grateful that it's coming up toward the end of the treatment, uh, I've had a, an inflammation of, of my uh, joints that started like three months ago with a very, very small pain and about two weeks ago it really it, it kicked in stronger and so i'd ask for prayer for that because as you know i've got two more treatments and and so it's likely to to the pot the pain is likely to raise its volume and it's got it's getting to the point where it's um interfering with my daily life and so i just ask for prayer that this will not especially not be lingering after the treatment is over. I just pray that, that it'll be a temporary thing. The doctor says, you know, it's like an unwanted guest. The treatment was going very well, but this unwanted guest sh showed up. And as I say, it's not severe at this point, but I just ask your prayers for, for, uh, for the Lord to take care of that secondary effect. As I as I go into the last two months of treatment, do they think that's um, because of the therapy? He says absolutely it is. That, that and gives me more hope, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's done all kinds of tests to make sure that it's not becoming an autoimmune disease like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. So it's all coming out clear. And, you know, my prayer is that it won't develop into something worse. Yeah. So, so uh, in, in truth, I'm so grateful it's turning up at the end, you know, because if I'd had to deal with this all year, it could have become very severe at the end. Yeah. So I just thank the Lord for, for his mercies in every way. And... Um, Where, where, well, I'm just switching to Mexico, but before I switch to Mexico, uh, my friend Gloria, it's a real gift, it's a special gift to have her here. She has been an enormous blessing in my life, and I know that I have been in her life, she's been going through a very difficult time with, with her, with health with her sister whom she has cared for for many years um, she was a missionary in india and that's where she met pramila and uh, pramila taught her all kinds of stuff with member care and how to care for missionaries and uh, when i first knew gloria and it was always on on zoom she used all that Pramila taught her to be a huge blessing to my life. So, so I want to thank Pramila for her blessing in my life through Gloria. 
Gloria was a missionary in India for a number of years, and that's where, where they work together. And uh, she has been such a blessing in these last three or four years. They just a, a God-given friend and, an, and a peer and somebody to walk alongside me in ways that I just, I can't describe. And it's so wonderful to be able to have her alongside and to be able to hug her and and see her in 3D and not flat on a screen, you know, because that's been our relationship for the last four years. And um, and with Mirna, Mirna is doing well. She's just finished the summer in Kikomar, which was very challenging, but they've done well. The team there has is supporting her well, and we thank the Lord for his protection and care for all the summer groups. And then I always give you an update about our uh, our brothers and sisters from the persecuted church in uh, Tepanco, Rancho Nuevo, and the school that they have started there. And that is going so well. One of the things that is happening now is that there are at least two other pastors who are starting uh, Christian schools in their communities following the Rancho Nuevo example because the Mexican government has made a massive educational changes with all this gender equality but also a breakdown of the whole um, educational system in that they're not teaching basic reading and writing and you know the three R's they have been eliminated and so kids are you know the textbooks have been completely turned around and uh, so schools you know even in these indigenous groups they're wanting to start Christian schools and and are very humble mothers who are teachers are out there training others in how to use the material and how to start a school and they've got over 50 students in the Ameli school and I'm busy trying to get um, textbooks and stuff for for the other startup schools so so it's just a real blessing to see how, what God is doing through through this group now the uh, the community itself has been very violent against the uh, the believers and Rogelio Pastor Rogelio uh, he had a house that was confiscated and the roof removed and it had a big cistern and that was destroyed by mallets because they they are uh, violent against them and want to destroy their property. There are a number of different people who have had their property destroyed. And um, one of the things that has, has us very concerned is that they have been threatening to attack and rape their daughters. And uh, this has not happened, but we just need to be praying against that because there's specific girls that that have been targeted and have been threatened by name to the to their fathers and so we just need to be praying for them that this that the lord will continue to protect them so that's basically my uh update